Can you hear us now? Okay, okay. great. Well, I want to begin by thanking you for inviting us to join you. I'm Naya Swami Nakula and my lovely wife, Naya Swami <laughs> Nishala. And uh, I just had the thought that uh, the topic for today is on acceptance, as I understand it. So I guess when I accepted the offer to speak about acceptance, that would be my acceptance speech. <laughs> um, I have a few thoughts on the topic of acceptance. There's really a couple of different threads of thought on the issue. And a lot of times we think of acceptance as being passive. Uh, when uh, situations come your way, um, that perhaps it isn't uh, the outcome that you were hoping for and wanting, and you find there's no, um, there's no way to affect that yourself with your own efforts, you just accept, we accept what comes to us, you know, whatever comes to us, let it be and not resist and fight against it. And that's a good thing. We'll find that in many times in our lives that a lot of our um, unsettlement, a lot of our difficulties are made worse uh, in our life because we're resisting something that's coming to us. Um, sometimes you'll have interactions in, in your work life or in other parts of your life where you may become engaging with people that are challenging for you to uh, work with. They have different temperaments and, you know, all things are equal, but uh, sometimes we feel a little resistant to, to things and uh, it's, it's helpful in our life to let go and let God take over. And uh, you really want to tune in to God to understand when God is seeking you to let go. And also when God is seeking you to embrace. Um, I was going to give a little example from the past in my life where um, I don't often share this story, but uh, when our son was very young, we were a young family, uh, I was involved with the United Builders Guild, uh, which was a very large uh, entity at the village uh, doing all the building of the homes and businesses. And um, we went through a phase of a building boom. There was probably 45 people or more, um, primarily the families at the village were involved, but not exclusively. Uh, but it was a good way that the families could earn the support they needed to financially support their families here. And we went through a building boom and reached um, sort of a dip in the building around uh, early 1990s. And um, I had become uh, Michael Gornick, uh, some of you may know was the founding leader uh, of the Builders Guild and he was moving into village management and I had become the leader, the president of the Builders Guild at that time, and we ran into financial issues. We were in a bankruptcy-like condition. Uh, had, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars of, of debt and, and no jobs. And we had a meeting together to discuss because the, the guild was, all members were equal partners. Uh, it wasn't owned by anyone, it was, owned by all the employees. And we had a meeting uh, to discuss how to deal with the debt. And there was a lot of different ideas. And after the meeting, I was, um, it was in my home where we had the meeting and I was just meditating and looking at the fire. And, and I, I actually felt I could hear master's voice right behind me saying, take responsibility. 
And uh, I accepted that. And there were a number of people that moved on and left the guild to do other things or work independently. There was a core few people that stayed on and we continued trying to get jobs and we worked really hard. We contacted all the people we owed money to, which was probably 60 different places of various types. Um, and, you know, I would do the payroll overnight once a month and I would uh, just work really hard to do estimating. And so, you know, Vajra Johnson was another one that was there with, with it. Um, there was a few, but uh, it was a smaller group and we continued working. Uh, I remember we had one vendor uh, building supply house that wasn't sure whether they wanted to sell us or not. And I told them, well, if you sell to us, we promise we'll pay off everything we owe you. And otherwise we would have to go to another vendor and buy from them and we could file bankruptcy and, and not pay you. And they came by and saw me out on the job working, hanging the sheetrock myself with everybody. And so they went ahead and stuck with us. And uh, eventually we paid off uh, everyone completely without any legal filing of bankruptcy. We just told each person, we'll send you a little bit of money every month. And we accepted that. And um, later, after a couple of years of that, we had the very graceful blessing of uh, a big job for a wealthy woman in Sacramento who provided uh, work at a good rate of pay for many years. And we actually were quite financially successful by taking the responsibility, accepting that we owed this money and did the best that we could to pay it as best we could. And uh, I really felt like that dharmic acceptance was the direct result of us finding some very very financially uh, fulfilling opportunities in the future. Somewhat uh, similarly was the Temple of Light that was mentioned. We, we had that and we had, the village had spent many years uh, wanting to build a temple. Many different leaders over decades have made the effort to build a temple and the timing just didn't ever quite work. And uh, at that time, Jatish and Devi just, um, Swami had passed and Jatish and Devi just took the position, we just need to do this and make it happen. And so as you know, one of the builders here in the village, um, although I was with uh, the Ananda College with Nishla for about 15 years in between there, um, I was drawn back into the building world with the Moksha Mandir construction and the Temple of Light. And we ended up having a, a fairly short period of time. We, we had, if, if you're familiar with, with the village, the Moksha Mandir is um, a fairly small structure that is where Swami's uh, body is laid to rest. And it's a Temple, chapel, fantastic place. And we had about as much time building that as building the Temple of Light, which is <laughs> probably about a hundred times bigger and more complex in many ways. And, um, but we accepted the challenge and many people believed that we wouldn't be able to complete it. It was, um, the 50th anniversary was the dedication and opening. So we had, we had um, a, a fixed time. The 50th anniversary was on a certain date. And uh, that's really not up for discussion. 50, it's just math, 50 years is on the state. <laughs> <laughs> and we had spent a couple of years planning and designing and working it out and building the budget and and making the commitment, doing the fundraising. So by the time we were able to proceed and get the permit, 
to build. Uh, more time has passed than we wanted, <laughs> but the deadline remained fixed. So we accepted that challenge though. And we, you know, by the grace of God, by accepting what was asked of us, which was a challenge, we were able to complete it. We actually uh, got the, the final inspection passed at 9.30 Friday morning uh, before the uh, Friday evening opening of the event to start the week-long dedication ceremony. And, uh, but it came right, right then. And uh, so uh, to summarize, there is always the opportunity to accept what comes to you. And sometimes it may be accepting something that you need to let go and relax and accept that that is the way it is. And other times it's a responsibility, a dharma, that you would want to accept that and put out the extra energetic energy and try harder, keep reaching out to um, achieve that goal that you've accepted the opportunity to have that responsibility. <laughs> and uh, again, I want to thank you all for inviting us to join your satsang. I don't know a whole lot about your group or your, um, your scene down there in Texas, but I, I know uh, one of my friends and, and partners, uh, Pandaranga Heater, was, uh, in, came from that group uh, many, many years ago before he came to the village. And, so I know there's a good uh, loving connection there with, with you all. And we're proud of you for um, all the efforts you're putting out for your Sangha there. Thank you, sweetie. Okay. Well, I I was listening to your affirmation for your new space and I was and I just um, <coughs> will ho definitely hold it in prayer because um during COVID, I think a lot of us have had a similar situation where we, we either everything kind of fell apart and now we're sort of trying to put things back together. And so I definitely want to share that we will send our prayers and our love to you for your new center, because it's, it's so important right now, especially um, Jyotish and Davy recently reminded us all in a satsang here at the village that we are, you know, Swami was the disciple of a great master, Paramahansa Yogananda, and that we are the next, we are the people who must continue on. And so in many ways, I think a lot of us as devotees must keep that light strong and the world and how much the world needs each one of us here, each, every one of us putting out more light into the world, because there just aren't that many places on in the world where people like yourselves and all of us here at Ananda have the energy and the love to share that with the whole world. So um, thank you for, for um, inviting us. And also I wanted to I know Nakul has talked a little bit about acceptance, but I, <laughs> I wanted to share with you a funny story because when I um, first came up to Ananda, I'd been living in the Palo Alto community and was one of the founding members there. And when we moved up to the meditation retreat, I was nine months pregnant with our son, Rama. And so I, you know, back in those days, the meditation retreat had no electricity. It had only these little candle lights. If you may have remembered, you may have been there. You would go into the cabins and we had propane candle lights and wood stoves and whatnot, but there was no electricity. Um, we were up there actually 18 years. And we just now recently, last year, moved down here to the ashram that we call Karuna Sagra that you're seeing here that. Um, Nakula and our son and several young people from Ananda built with us, but it's um, 
it was a, a very different place then. And I was nine months pregnant. We were, um, after I had, when I had the baby, actually Nakula had been out working in construction, building our house. And he rolled in to the meditation retreat to our cabin. It was called, um, at that time, it was the Sacramento house, I believe, way out on the end, way out, sort of in the middle of nowhere. And he rolled in and it was about one in the morning and he went to bed. And at half an hour after he got into bed, I felt our son was coming and he was, you know, I could feel my water break, which is what happens when a woman is about ready to have a baby. And I thought, oh my goodness, it's three weeks before he's due. But I got up and yes, indeed, we were having the, going to have the baby. And so I said to Nakula, I said, the baby's coming, the baby's coming. And we had planned to have um, a hospital birth. That was my intuition, which was a good one. But we, um, he turned to me and he said, what? He can't come now. I haven't finished building the house. <laughs> and it was just, it was like, that was the way it started. And so we just, you know, we, we rent down Jackass Flats, which is a, is a, a road that has got more potholes than any road I've ever seen. At that time, it had a lot more potholes, the size of a Volkswagen, you could just drive your car in there and come right out of the pothole. But we drove to the hospital. And then after 24 hours of labor, um, our son was born. And I remember the, the nurse coming to me at that time and saying, um, I wanted to listen to the baby's heartbeat. And he um, the nurse listened and was very, very upset and pulled in his doctor. Doctor came into the, the room there with us and said, oh dear, there's something wrong. And so of course I didn't know what to expect, but it was, had already been, he was born like 15 minutes after midnight. So it was in the middle, it was probably about three or four in the morning when this happened. And so I think I got maybe two hours of sleep and the doctors came in and said, we'll have to take your son to um, a place in Sacramento to a specialist, a heart specialist. And we did that. We went, you know, after having 24 hours of labor, drove down to Sacramento and the pediatric cardiologist examined him and took all these tests. And then he came in to me with a very somber face and explained to me that our son had three different heart um, conditions that would make it that we would need to operate within a year because he wasn't large enough to um, have a, a complete open heart surgery. And so again, as a devotee, when you're, when you have these big things happen, it's, you know, you know, that the teachings say remain calm and even and don't let, you know, things go too far up or too far down, but just ride through the middle. And it's very difficult when you're in a situation, when you're, it's right in your face to, re, to, um, to adhere to those teachings, but it was a big test for me. And I believe those tests come to help us get stronger and to help us face these things that we may not have normally been able to, or we didn't know, but this is the way God works. And and he's always wanting to help us. So he's always wanting to refine us into this beautiful diamond. And, you know, we resist and whatnot. And another thing that happened right after that, I think that ours, you know, we'd been living at the meditation retreat. And um, it was maybe a, um, a month after our son had been born. And I get this phone call from Swami Kriyananda. And he's like, hi, how are you doing? And he said, I want you to come work for me. I want you, we need your help. We need you to do all these things for Crystal Clarity Publishers. And I'd had a business beforehand that was more of a corporate kind of business. And he, they do, doing a lot of marketing and design. I had my own firm in Palo Alto. And so I was looking forward to going to Ananda Village to work at Master's Market. I just thought, I don't need anything else. I just want to serve and um 
show my appreciation to Ananda. And so, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, oh, uh, what happened to Master's Market? But I said, yes. <laughs> and I went ahead and I worked for him. And, you know, Swami Kriyananda said that Yogananda gave him intuition. He gave him intuition. And at that time, I was thinking, this is, this is kind of interesting. And it, later, when I started working for him, it turns out that after our son had had his open heart surgery, that our son would sleep for five to seven hours at a time. And during that time, I could work for Swami. And so he somehow, with his intuition, could see this. And um, I have to say, so, you know, acceptance is a wonderful double-edged sword for devotees. And um, I, I know I wanted to talk a little bit about Ananda College. And um, I, I can answer questions about the book if you'd like, but I wanted to talk a little bit about Ananda College because similar to your situation where you're having to find a whole new place for your satsang, um, the college had a similar kind of experience in um, January of 2020, we were planning to go forward to introduce our first gap year program. And we had been before we had been a four year college and offering degrees and whatnot, but we really took a step back and examined what we could really offer young people and it it seemed to be going in the direction of a gap year, which is sort of like a mini master's program that would be nine months long. And so we were planning to introduce this new gap year in September of 2020. And then in February, COVID hit and it just threw everything up in the air as I'm sure we many people and many businesses have had to deal with this. But for us, it was, you know, we, you know, being a small college, we were much more vulnerable. So in February, we basically had to stop and had to say, we can't take students. And we, this went on and we were just like, well, what are we going to do? You know, what, what can we do for this? And we began um, to offer online courses. And we were very nervous about this because we really hadn't done online courses before. And we started offering them and you know a lot of people really took to them and signed up with us people that we never would have um, been able to work with before from all over from all over the country and so it turns out in um, January of this year it was we were thinking about well what are we we're going to start our new gap year and 2021 but it just didn't feel right it didn't feel like it was the time and so we started um we went for a grant a, a california grant for covid relief and it took us six months we finally got a very small grant but um so now what we're doing with the college is in september next september 2022 we are opening our first gap year program, which is a nine month program. And um, we're advertising and promoting it through some teen, er teen areas where there's a lot of teen activity. But we're also, we've been asked by a lot of older people if they could take the courses and, and we're like, well, why not? So we're opening this gap year as an intergenerational gap year because it will be hybrid. A certain amount will be in person. So the first two weeks in September will be intense um, intensives and wonderful courses with your instructors. And then people go away and they have online courses and come have a holiday break and then come back in January, take some more online courses and then go to travel. In this case, we'll go to Greece and Crete for two weeks and then come back to Ananda Village and have the final two weeks here at the village. So it's a hybrid program. So it's totally new. It's nothing we ever expected we would do, but it's what sort of some of the directions that education is going in because we're, we're um, seeing a lot of people, especially young people, not wanting to go the traditional college route. And so we're the perfect 
venue for that because we'll be offering courses like Finding Your Dharma, which is a long course that will help you help young people. And I think all of us, I mean, sometimes in our life, we begin to think, well, maybe I should do something new. And um, so we're looking at finding your Dharma is a wonderful course and some holistic health and healing, but going more into some of the new techniques that are out there and including quantum physics and energy medicine and a variety of of um, new modalities and old modalities with alternative healing. And we're also including the Ananda course in meditation in our, um, our online offerings. And so what we're doing right now is we're starting um, this April, April 16th to May 2nd, 2022, we're offering a trip to Greece and Crete. And that trip is open to all people. And it's a, um, it's a two week, it's done well through the lens of the yuga cycles of time. And the yuga cycles are um, from Uteshwar, Swami Sri Uteshwar created this 24,000 year ascending and descending yugas that rise and fall and it is how civilizations why they fall why they are born and whatnot and you can look at um a lot of um our life and a lot of right now we're going through some some changes and we're looking at um um greece and crete through this the lens of the yuga cycles of time also with greek mythology and um, spirituality will be there for Easter for Holy Week and checking and looking into the spiritual communities in Greece and Crete. And so those kind of offerings are things that we're doing with the college. And so those are some of the things that we're doing. I think, um, I think a lot of education, a lot of education here at Ananda and in our schools, and I think throughout the planet, people are beginning to really look at questioning some of the old ways of education and looking for new ways of doing things. And um, so that's what we've been doing. And um, I'm trying to see the time, how we're doing on our time. Um, Just about right. I think there, if there's any questions, yes, I did write a book called The Four Stages of Yoga. And it became a bestseller on Amazon in twenty in June twenty eighteen, and I'm happy to talk about that. If you have questions, um, that was a book that basically twenty years before I wrote it, I met with Swami Kriyananda in Assisi, Italy, and I did an interview with him, and I asked him about the um, <clears throat> four ashrams of life. And he gave me this wonderful, it was like, I think we talked for about three hours and he gave this incredible discourse on how, where we're going to be going in the higher ages and what people will be doing and how we'll be living to be 120 and, um, and just some very, very interesting ideas and thoughts. And so I've collected them and put them in this book along with interviews with many people, um, rishis in India, people here at Ananda Village, other people who are in yoga to give a, um, a collection of ideas about living life through the four stages. And so these four stages, um, I can go into more detail or you can ask questions and I'm sure maybe you may want to know about our lives here at Ananda Village or about um, Nakula and myself or our son, about what we do, how we think. <laughs> Anything you want to ask, um, I think is it time right now we can begin yes. to open some questions. Does that sound right, Maya Tree? Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. And I, I, I must have had a major brain synapse lapse to not 
mention the fact that you guys are, you know, the founders of the Ananda College. That's a huge, huge endeavor that you've been doing for a number of years. And I'm so glad that you, you shared with us more about that. So yeah, that's, that's wonderful. And I also wanted to mention um, <clears throat> too, because you mentioned the yugas, about Biasa's class through your Ananda College that's yeah. happening in January. If yeah. anybody wants to really go in depth about the yugas, he's the man of the hour. He's, he just, and, and that course we've heard from our friends at Monterey Bay that have taken it is just an extraordinary course. We're, we're trying to carve out time for that ourselves because we, we are just, we love the yugas, you know, it just, and in these times yeah. it especially is great to get that perspective, uh, you know, that that offers. Oh. Yeah, that's a wonderful course. Well, we have a we have an introductory course that's asynchronous. That's basically that gives you an overview of the yugas, so that you don't have to, because his course that he's offering in January is an advanced course. So he wants to make sure that people that sign up for it have some sort of an understanding of the yugas before he goes deeply into it. And I did tune into. Um, that course because it was um, fascinating for me when it was happening. And so all I have to say is if you really want to deeply connect with the yoga cycles through um, the college and with Biasa, that would be the opportunity. Also in January, there's another class um, which is comparative mythology of Greece, India, and Egypt. And that also will be done <clears throat> through the lens of the Yuga Cycles of Time. That's being done by Jenny Kellogg. She's a PhD and she's one of our instructors and she's a Kriya Bond. She lives in Washington, DC. And she and Biasa and myself have been working together on this course and she'll be out here next month to talk more deeply about it. It's really fascinating. It's something that I don't think we've ever done at Ananda before is going into looking at <clears throat> some of these myths that have happened, which myths, but we know them to be true in the higher ages, but for a lot of people, it's hard to grasp some of these realities, but the myths of Greece and Egypt and India, and of course, India has the longest um, history with, with um, information and and spirituality that they can offer. So that's another course. So yeah, the yuga cycles are, you know, I think we might be the, <laughs> we might be the only college on the planet that's really looking at the yuga cycles. Hi, there's Monterey Bay. But, but not, but not the last. <laughs> I was just going to say real quick so that people can feel more comfortable with coming on and asking questions that we'll be stopping our uh, Facebook stream. Um, you should have told the Facebook. I should have told the Facebook people before <laughs> I did that. But uh, anyway, <laughs> so if you uh, have uh, questions or comments that you'd like to uh, chime in, uh, if, uh, if you have questions for Nisha and Nikula, please feel comfortable in doing so because we are no longer on Facebook. Um, I'm going to continue recording, but your questions will not be published anywhere whatsoever without <laughs> your knowledge. So, but yeah, and, and you're welcome to open up your cameras. You can ask questions live. You can put them in the chat box. So, looks think, like Sam. I is think ready. Sam has something to say. Well, I always have something to say. You know that. Hi, Nishla Nicole. It's been a Hi, long Sam. time. It's been a long time, and as and I know that soon we're going to be back together again. I see some of the events are opening up at the expanding light. Which is like a light bulb drawing us moths closer <laughs> to you. Uh, yes. We'll get there. Yeah. Um, I need to do a little bit of advertising for for uh, a Biasa's class. You know, Pam and I are just yoga freaks. <laughs> Everything we do in our life right now is going. Which yuga cycle was that? How many? How many yuga cycles was that before? Yeah. And and it, uh, it it it's very inspirational. And in, in taking the whole course, the little the the brief course in the beginning, the video courses to get a good feel for it, and then getting into the longer 
uh, courses itself. Uh, I know Rama was there for the for the class, and I I always saw he was using your computer, Nishala. <laughs> Actually, he was. <laughs> We shared our computer, <laughs> and uh, uh, it was a it was a great time. We had a group of people with us. It was maybe six six or seven of us who took the class, and it was uh, magnificent. And to the point now where we have continued. We meet once a month to continue talking about the yugas and researching and helping Vyasa find more stuff that he might be able to use in his classes and in his books. And, and it has been a joy. I, I look forward to that uh, second Tuesday of every month now where we get together and we just talk about the yugas. Yeah. So, you know, I encourage all of you out there, if you have a little bit of interest in the yugas, do this because by the time you're done, you'll have a big interest in, and in, in how it makes you feel. I know if Pam was here, she would, she would say this, that it gives you confidence that our world will continue. <laughs> it, although it seems dark and dreary right now, yeah. we can actually now probably maybe even measure the increase in consciousness yeah. in our yeah. world as the uh, ascending Dwapara, as the ascending yugas are happening. Take the class. Take the class. <laughs> Find a little bit of cash. It's not that much. <laughs> Sign up and take it. And then join us every every first Tuesday, the second Tuesday of every month for this discussion. And you'll just love it. I'm sorry. Okay, this is my ad. Thank you. Well, also, too, Sam, um, all, for all of those in your class, too, Biasa and myself and um, Jenny Kellogg, who is um, a PhD and has led tours for to Greece and Crete for Harvard, and she's a fan of the yugas, have been working on the other class that will be on a different night, which is the comparative mythology of Greece. Mm -hmm in India. And we're doing that through the lens of the yuga cycles. And we've already done a lot of research, Biasa and myself and Jenny on that course. And let me tell you, it's fascinating. I'll give you one little um, tidbit about that. In On the island of Crete, the Minoan civilization, which was a, a civilization that was started mm -hmm. in the higher Treta Yuga, they found um frescoes and artifacts there that lead a lot of our hist historians have said this not just us to believe that 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 on the island of crete was the first matriarch matriarchal society and um there's incredible information there that um we'll look at there's this one um there's one fresco in the in the temple of Gnosis on the island of Crete that shows three people dancing with a bull. Essentially, one has um, the bull by the horns, so to speak, and the other one is putting their <clears throat> arms up like this. And then the third one is on top of the bull in like an acrobatic dance. And if there's, they're finding these things, if that in the Treta Yuga and in the descending Dwapara Yuga, which was an age of energy, those kinds of things that we have a hard time realizing did happen, working with energy, perhaps being able to work in harmony with animals and not in a us or them kind of situation, but the harmony with the animals and the plant life and the trees and the whole planet was much more elevated at that time. And so some of these things that we're going to look at are going to be really fun for everyone. So thank you for that advertisement. And I hope to see you. <laughs> I, uh, for, for those of you who might not be looking at the chat, I put the uh, URL for the Ananda College in the uh, chat. So feel free to grab that and check it out uh, at your leisure. So. Um, oh, how about some more questions? Anybody? You could, again, you could put them in the chat box or open up your.
cameras. There's lots that we can talk to them about. I think we have a question from Carolyn in the chat box, right? It's just a thank you. It's oh, okay. The message today is right in my face, one of letting go of my sorrows and turning more to God. And she's just thanking them for what they, they shared. So I might interject um, another little ad for the college. That, uh, thank you, Sam, for the kind words you've spoken. And uh, when you do check out the website, if you have other interests, for instance, there's a a writing course uh, by Rebecca Davis that has had equally rave reviews of that course and a new one coming out about health and healing. Am I right? Yeah, that actually, that those will start in September of 2022 when we start our gap year. And again, yeah. what we're doing, which may be controversial, is we're opening our gap year for pe people from 16 to 90 because we found that the college has a unique thing to offer a lot of our work with the yugas, some of our trips that we'll be doing and some of the courses we'll be doing aren't the kind of courses you would necessarily find from the expanding light. However, we will have our sessions will be <coughs> at the expanding light when we do our intensives. So they won't be at the meditation retreat. So. I want to uh, just add you remind me of the meditation retreat. Those those of us that have visited the meditation retreat are reap the benefits on every visit from all the hard work that you guys put in to transform it. I mean, it was it had its rustic appeal before, but now it's just like going to the astral world. So much gratitude for all those years and and uh, my mother, we're just the channels. Yeah. Well, you you offered a vision or channeled a vision that is we all are, are reaping the benefits of so thank you very very special place it is yep i'd like to know more a little bit about your you said you're in your new home is uh, what's it called again it's called karuna sagara okay. and that means karuna sagara means in sanskrit ocean of compassion beautiful and that name actually we was given to us by Vana Molly Devi. She was a dear friend of Swami Kriyananda's. And after Swami Kriyananda died, she did come to visit us when we were in Oregon for a while with the college and stayed with us for two weeks. And she's always been close with Nakula and I because we always take the college trips to her ashram in Rishikesh. And we told her about this land that we'd purchased right it's right across the street from the expanding light and the entrance to ananda village and she just looked at us and sounded like swami when she was speaking she just said call it karuna sagara and she said that fits your energy and so <laughs> there we go we you know sometimes god speaks to us through different people and so that's the name of our ashram and we have some guest rooms here and you know it's small but it's that we're right across from the expanding light. We can see them as we come down the road. And so it's um, a place where we have about 17 acres. And, you know, we might have some college events here, but we've had a big open house <laughs> during COVID for the whole community. And Jyotish and Davy came over and did a great blessing. We walked through land with photographs of the masters to bless everything and so you know so the, welcome the to come purpose visit of us. that is it's like the home base for the college or i'm just you know trying to understand you know yeah. well it's a home base for the college in that a lot of times when we were at the meditation retreat the, that was our home base and so this way we kind of have a college home even though it's not a camp it's a it's a small campus, but we plan to use the expanding light and some of the other facilities. We also have, for instance, the Library of Higher Consciousness is within the village at Rogers Lee Park. So we're kind of, you know, moving in both areas. Also, it's a home for my husband's tractors. <laughs> <laughs> That's important. I know. I, 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 very important. I come from a long line of farmers, so I understand that, although I've never, never farmed myself. Um, yeah. So... My, my question was, uh, is, is, so is 
Do you have permanent residents of the ashram as well, or or is it just a? We have long term residents uh, stay here for up to six months, and uh, currently we're looking at having short term guests yeah. in the immediate future, yeah. and we're just letting it evolve organically, as yeah. we say. Yeah. You know, eventually when expanding light is open and uh, filled up. Uh, we would have extra rooms available for, uh, you know, a, a, the, for people that would want to be coming and staying adjacent to the village. Yeah, or, or um, perhaps people <laughs> that, for one reason or another, being slightly off campus of the expanding light would suit their personal situation. We have three guest rooms and they each have a private bathroom. And we're within walking distance. You just walk down the hill and across the street and over to the market in 10 minutes or up to the Temple of Light. So we are nearby, but um, we're, like we're working with Krishna Das for some of his retreats to have pe some people stay here instead of having to drive into town for Airbnb, that kind of thing. So we're being flexible and organic. <laughs> but you're all welcome to come if you really want to but it really is they're they're more short-term rentals we have our son and his girlfriend living on property and another fellow living in the little bungalow that's um come come and gone with us for yeah. 20 years he's come stays with us for a couple years yeah every so often yeah he so. was he was a monk with swami when he came to us at the meditation retreat when he was 18 years old, he could sit in the lotus position and meditate with us like he'd been doing it for many lifetimes. So he stayed with us at the meditation retreat. And then when we went to India, he traveled with us and he met Swami and was that was when Swami was writing the Bhagavad Gita. And he decided he wanted to be a monk there with Swami. So with Jamal, who you may know, Jamal, and one other monk, the three of them became the first monks with Swami in India. So he's sort of been a wandering sadhu and went to nursing school, and now he's back here with us, so, <laughs> living in a little bungalow. So, yeah. I had a, this is Eric, and Hi, it, Eric. Hey, it's good to see y'all. Nice to see you. You know, I, I education has always been my love, and, and I think it, all of us share that in, to a great degree. And by the way, I've been to Vatamali's thing, oh. and I, I consider that actually a uh, a course I took. You yeah. know, traveling in India is a course of oh, knowledge, yeah. and it, it's it's, yeah. it's it's feeling. And you know what I like? It's interesting about one day. So you might ask somebody, "Oh, what college did you go to?" or something. And they may say, well, Harvard and Nanda, University of Texas, you know, it's kind of like a combination of all. And it's, yeah. I like, I like how you're letting it evolve because yeah, sometimes a university has a feeling to it and all the courses are colored in some sense by the feeling or the vibration of the college. And in a sense, it limits something. So you're providing some opening for people to move into a, I've always thought frequency or vibration was a course, you know, a, a, the, really the underlying everything. And so it's yeah. not just information you're providing, of course, yeah. it's something on something else. Well, that, thank you. That's very true because we think of ourselves as a spiritual college. Um, oftentimes there, you know, we're a place for young people to come and we offer them what we feel would help them courses like finding your dharma and things that so that if they have that experience with us for nine months and then they decide to go to college or career or whatever they decide to do they will have that touchstone and of course we're also including the ananda course in meditation and some other fun courses that they will take and working with um, Rebecca Davis and, and Dr. Kellogg and Nefertiti Rashid and Kat, um, Kathleen Benson. There's a whole group of people that are, I think will be 
we're going to open them to that'll be real different. So I was thinking one other thing, though, that my wife and I, as we get older, we tend to not we tend to be more concentrated in what we listen to and what we let into our thing. And so we'll listen to something like this or something like a, what we would consider an elevated book, you know, together on audible.com or something like that. Yes. The, one of the most important things I see in the world is people my age. That's why I'm happy mm. that you're doing it for people who are up to 90. There's a great deal of people coming to the end of their life and going, Oh, still not attuning to that oh. kind of, we don't have that feeling that it, we're just, you yeah. know, you know what I'm talking about. And so the people yes. need some hope, people, oh, yes. all, especially people older than myself who can't move mm -hmm. and things. That's so true, Eric. I, that's one of the things that Swami Krenanda said to me when I did that interview with him, he said, look, we're going to be living to be 120. And so really in the sannyasi um, age, it goes from 72 years old to 120. So one of the people I interviewed was Craig Marshall, who'd been a, a monk with SRF for many years. And he said, hey, 70 is the new 50. So the whole idea that we still in those last years of our life from age 72 to 120, some of us may get there are so important because I feel that that's really the most powerful time of a person's life, because that's when all the threads mm -hmm. of all that you've done throughout your life come together and you become, you, yes, you can be more reflective, but you can also be an incredible channel to help other people during that time. And that we can see in these kind of online satsangs that people that are older can have have incredible information to offer to each other so that's what i'm hoping this new hybrid model will do so we're not limiting it to 16 to 20 year olds it's and I, I tell you i i i've made certain i don't want to say errors but i've learned certain things that i will talk because i learned them this late i, I talk to younger people and say look think about this now, you know, and, and so we become the channels of talking about yeah. that possibility of what we've learned. Yes. And That's so they, so yeah. true because when there's a need in our society for elders, yes, the need in our society for wise elders. So those of you listening here, you have a lot of wisdom to offer the younger generation. And I'm hoping those kinds of things will happen in the intergenerational kind of college. Yes, we're we're going. We do want young people to come, but you know, young people today are seeing this whole globalization, and so I'm I'm hoping it will be wonderfully enriching for everyone. Thank you for your comments. I uh, thank you. I would like to say that we we spent 10 years trying to fit into the mold of a bachelor's degree university and the it's it's all geared on how the money moves around and big money and the accreditation process and the bureaucratic restrictions and reporting and it just it just buried us and yeah. switching into the gap year mode we're not trying we're not getting buried by having to uh, meet all the restrictions and requirements for um, not the requirement for instance they they're having requirements that you have to have graphs and reports of how much money your graduates are making and put it into a report that is proving that the tuition is paying back to them. It's it's a good idea to want to find a way that to feel like people are getting what they're paying for. But having it bureaucratically and regulatorily done, it just it just swamps the boat. T teach teach that to the young. Yeah. <laughs> Let me yeah. tell you that what you just mentioned can save somebody years of heartache. Oh yeah. yeah. 
we end up getting a lot of students who say, I've, I've been through four years of college and I don't want to be a XYZ that they had to sign up when they were a freshman. I want to try something else. So, you know, the for young people. You need people, to learn how to think. And for young people, their brain, their new studies have found that sometimes for, for um, I'm saying, for, look, thinking of my son, the brain doesn't fully mature until they're 26, 27, 28 years old. Think about that. And then if we have children, you know, I mean, I know I have a son who is kind of a late bloomer and I can testify that his brain was t- took longer, but it just that people need, you know, young people need a longer birth, a longer birth where they can have time to explore and find out who they are, where they're going in life. And hopefully, you know, the, the whole premise of my book, the, the four stages of yoga was to launch out this whole idea that we don't have to, you know, find the garden of Eden when we're 60, we can look at this whole other pathway that the Rishis have laid out for us that allows us as elders to give back in a way that our society hasn't done before. How are we doing, Maya Tree? Well, we're doing great. We're going to probably be wrapping it up here, but I wanted to see if there's other folks. It looks like Mike is unmuted. Maybe Mike has a question. Yeah, I was just, I always thought from the perspective of Vedic astrology and the Mahadashas that why not have the full 120 years, which allows a person to uh, experience uh, each of the long-term parts of the life. Sure. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Well, maybe you've hit on something there that be because we can go through this whole cycle. But Swami did say that people would be living to 120 and we've got a few people in our community. I don't know if you know Gloria Dunigan. She's in her, I think she's 92 or 93 and she's got as much energy as a 24 year old. And she's getting a hip replacement, but she's an inspiration to, for all of us to look at. And so I really do think we have to not think in terms of when I'm going to leave the planet. It's like I've got another, you know, 50, 60 years to go. And as a yogi, how can we serve and help? And I think I think that's a wonderful idea, though, about the, the Vedic astrology. So you only have to go through your Saturn, your Saturn one time, or your, you know, you get to fulfill the K2 and the Rahu in one lifetime. That would be very interesting. <clears throat> yeah, it, I wanted to tell you that Gian Davy was my cousin. It's my dad's cousin. Oh, <laughs> remember? And Asha, absolutely. Think about her. She she was brilliant, oh. brilliant woman, and and. Yes. And vital up until she went to Ananda House, and which yes. was such a great idea, and, yes. and passed away. Yeah. Well, you know, she lived right across the street from us because our house at the time was right across the street from the Ananda House, and we used to go over and see her, and she was amazing. And I can remember the last time I've spent with her, and she just had this big smile on her face, and I looked at her and I said. Gian Davy, I love you. And she just turned to me and she said, I love you too. I mean, just, you know, she was just a beautiful beaming soul who really helped Ananda House get off their feet. And so, you know, and she was, we had her come to the college and she, when we were at the meditation retreat, she would come and talk about hiking in the Himalayas and all the <laughs> traveling, all the trips that she took. And it was very inspiring and uplifting for the young people. And people like Satya, I don't know if any of you ever met him who lived out at the meditation retreat. He was the oldest member of the meditation retreat. And we always included him in everything. He, I asked him, I, he said, oh, I don't, 
I, I don't think I want to come to the dining room anymore, Nishala. And I said, Satya, you have to come. He would just sit next to people and he wouldn't say a word. He just sort of knew if someone needed energy or love and he would just sit there quietly next to them and he would be their spiritual friend. And so all these kinds of things. And I, I truly hope that your, um, your Dallas satsang can get a new place. I, I do hope, I'm, I'm sure it will. But, um, but I think what you're doing is wonderful. It's so inspiring, you know, getting you had some, you had Sam Baroni come from Monterey. So that's wonderful. Yeah. And we have other people online from California and I, we have some from Austin. Um, anyway, so it's, it's really very, very special that we've been doing this and thanks to, I'll just say to Mark, who's our techie. Ah, yes. who makes it all happen behind the scenes there. Oh, yeah. But do, do you, I'm sure you remember and or have any stories on Cliff who lived oh, at the meditation yes. receipt? Uh, <laughs> Cliff, well, we did. Um, he was there. A he was ago. up there when Hari Das, we, we took yeah. over running the retreat after Hari Das and Roma did. And Cliff, yes, you know, he'd been a great person in, was it, theater i believe in new york city and he was just i mean he and harry doss were close but he was like a he was like charles charles is the gardener he was kind of um the elder up there and we everyone you know supported him being there i mean what a great opportunity that in your older years you could go to the meditation retreat and be like a little be be a hermit but also be a celebrity so um you know holding um people like cliff and charles and Sacha, just holding them in a lot of esteem because just even though they seemed like they were in the background they really provided a richness and depth at that retreat and and i hope so the same thing will happen here in the village as well and with your online satsang, because you always want to, you know, you're creating this community online. So you want to have some of your people be able to contribute. I want to brag a little bit about Renata, Texas, just for 30 seconds, because you probably don't know this. Uh, every day we have something, at least one thing online, sometimes two things. That's um, so we're very, very blessed. A lot of it's group meditations, whether it's three people or 10 who come on, you know, it doesn't matter. We're there. And then we have kirtans a few times a month. And oh. Sam and Pam are part of that, oh. as well as musicians in Colorado. So I'm going to stop bragging. It's with much humility oh. that I just say this is what has happened since we had to close our doors. Yeah, well, it's a great blessing because I think you'll see mm -hmm. that a lot more people, you'll reach a lot more people. It may be kind of a wobble for a while, but I'm sure <laughs> that it's going to grow. And, you know, thank you all. I know, Supriya, you've been there holding down the fort for a long time. And God bless you for all that you're doing and creating this kind of a satsang online. So I want to ask one more mundane question. Is your house across Tylerford Road from the expanding line? Yes, it is. It's right directly across from okay. the entrance to Ananda Village. Got and it. you have to walk across the road, but it's not that big of a deal. And um, uh, next time I come, I may turn in that way first before I yeah. go onto the property, because I yes. usually go stay up somewhere in the village. Um, yes. For a while and i am so ready to go but i may yeah. turn in just to see if you're home well we yeah, have on top of the hill we're on top of the yeah. hill so we're sort of equal with the expanding light and um please, please let us know if you're coming because we are gated we have a, a electronic gate so that you know we can control who comes in and out because it's a big property otherwise we wouldn't be able to watch it but um so yes you're welcome to come and if you want to stay here let us know. I, I do have one other mundane question, though it's never mundane for me. It was always the thrill to 
go during the uh, Perseid meteor shower. Oh. <laughs> do y'all still watch that each year? Yes, we yeah. do in August. Uh -huh. um, we do. We have an area up here at Karuna Sagra that's a flat area. <clears throat> and that's where we can see the meteors, but that's also where we hope to have a little temple to Divine Mother there someday if my lovely husband, my, <laughs> you know, can do Keep another temple, we'll have a small one up there. But yes, the, the meteor, I mean, I, we, our family does watch them. Yes. I think maybe Mallory had a question or had something. You no, wanted to... no, okay. I just wanted to point out uh, then that um, the the link to Nishala's uh, book, The Four Stages of Yoga, I think I got the title right. Did I yeah, get the title yeah. right? Is, is in the chat. So uh, check that out, folks. And um, anyway, I think maybe we're about to wrap yeah, up. Yeah, let's just see uh, one last chance from... Anybody who has not said anything, we got some quiet folks there. Um, you're welcome to ask a question now. We'll give a brief pause here. <laughs> or just say hi. Yeah, just say hi. Open your cameras. We're going to... Hi, Mallory. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be um, doing our namaste, y'all, in a minute. So... Uh, you're welcome to open up, but we've really enjoyed you, you guys uh, joining us today. It's, it's been great. I'm glad we were able to, to yeah. nab you and, and that you could share with us so much about the college and, and everything. It was very inspiring. Really do appreciate it. Hey, I, I actually have to say one, one quick request of y'all directly. If you have a book that you do, Swami Kriyananda used to put them on his voice on tape and read them aloud. Oh, I, I it's just oh. been a, a great joy for me whenever I listen to them in the early morning. It's kind of like a twilight experience. Yeah. If you can do your book and other people even start an audible.com for Ananda, I would love it. And I'll be brief. That was <laughs> well, all. Thank you. That was that must have come directly from Babaji because I have had this intention to, to do uh, my book and um, record it. I just haven't had the time with the college trying to get everything started, but I will take that into heart. And yes, thank you, Eric. So um, also the, the last thing before we go, I just wanna to mention to some folks that Monterey Bay is having a kirtan that starts, I think at one o'clock, if you just wanna turn it on while you're, you're doing your lunch, uh, that'd be great. But I've meant to mention that before, but Yes, thank you so much. This has been really wonderful. And uh, I hope you see the other things in the chat. Linda mentioned she uh, she okay. appreciates it. And she, she'd say hi, but her camera's not set up today. So, uh -huh. Uh -huh. but uh, it's been wonderful. And we hope, hopefully some of us will see you in some of those classes because they are very inviting and um, sound, sound great. And we wish you the best with those too. Yeah. And one last thing, if you want to come to Greece and Crete, I'll be leading that tour with Jenny Kellogg, April 16th to May 2nd. Wow. You can have fun in Greece. Uh, <laughs> that sounds, sounds wonderful. I'm, I'm waiting for that writing course to be at uh, a time that works for us here in Texas, if we can. <laughs> I, I, you know, that's a good point. We are going to be dropping all our courses back down a little bit earlier because of people from the East Coast and yeah. also from India have asked us if we could do that. So I think the advanced course in yugas and the the one that Jenny is teaching with Biasa, both will start around four o'clock in the afternoon so that people <clears throat> on in the Midwest and the East can can tune into that. That'd be great. great. That'd be great. Well, thank you again. And last chance for people to open up their cameras and wave goodbye. And the way we usually end these satsangs is to just say namaste, namaste y'all. And have a great day. <laughs> and happy Halloween. And uh, we'll, we'll be in touch. We'll, we'll keep connected. So God bless you. God bless you all. Everybody have a great thank day. You. Thank you both so much. Welcome, Supriya. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.